Hello and welcome back to our discussion on background tasks. So last time we looked at um, this flow and um, you know whether the task requires an active user. Based on that, you make some decisions whether it should run at exact time. You make some decision on how to implement it. Um, in in those cases, we saw the work manager uh, went a little deeper into how to implement that, and you know basically these two paths are done. Um, Java threads, as we said, you know, we saw the executor example in databases, but for more details, uh, that is left as exercise. So the remaining piece is here, the alarm manager, and that's what we'll talk about now. So basically in this video, we'll learn how to use uh, alarms, not the alarm clock, but alarm manager is a mechanism which uh, can trigger certain events um, at a specific time or at certain specific intervals. Okay, so uh, that's what we'll look at. And um, why is it under background tasks? Because that also can happen even when the app is not not running. So it is something delegated to um, uh, to the to the to the operating system, like the work manager, and that is invoked by the operating system based on the configuration with which it was created. So that is the idea here. So uh, there are two broad categories of alarms. One, a single use, as the name indicates, one time alarm for doing something, something specific, um, or there could be repeating alarms. So uh, these repeating alarms are triggered at either at an exact time. So things like, um, you know, say downloading the weather report every morning at 6 a.m. Um, and then maybe showing it on the device when uh, when the user wakes up um, or something that can be triggered at a regular interval so you know several of our uh, health exercise apps um, you know, you're done doing your um, doing your sets today and then I'm, after a certain time um, you want to do some other exercise you know so they are not dependent on an exact time of the day but they can be dependent on a certain interval to pass between the two occurrences of the event. Right. So uh, all these all these can be done using alarms. Alarms basically they uh, how they work is they um, they they generate an intent at the given time or the interval, and um, the alarm then can trigger a broadcast receiver so the mechanism is pretty similar to what we saw um, with uh, with the background tasks so far okay uh, and again you can launch a broadcast uh, receiver uh, or i mean you can you can grab an alarm with the broadcast receiver and then handle it uh, or perform those operations um, so alarms are operating uh, outside the app they are uh, they, they, they are triggered at a certain time and the alarm manager component of the operating system is the one that handles it. Um, so it can happen even when the app is not running and not just that, even when the device is asleep. So let me briefly talk about uh, what you mean by device is asleep. So when, um, and the, the key factor here is um, conserving the battery. So, um, you know, in the very first lectures, we talked about um, the special circumstances of, uh, of mobile app development and uh, the limited power, uh, along with the limited screen and other things, limited power is an important aspect. Uh, you depend on the battery life. I'm pretty sure uh, every one of you has experienced um, this in you know, the, their day-to-day -day use and you want to do something important, something cool and you are concerned about the low battery. Um, so you, you then, then you don't want to fire up an app that will take a lot of energy, right? So um, conserving the battery is key here. And uh, to do that, um, the, the Android system provides a, a state where the device basically goes to sleep. So, um, and you can customize that in settings. So maybe in with a five minutes of inactivity or 30 minutes of inactivity based on the user's preferences. 
uh, if the user is not interacting with the device that is not tapping uh, anywhere on the screen or doing something active with it, um, it's supposed to go to sleep. Um, that means it will um, it will reduce the components. The uh, it will it will stop or pause the components that are uh, battery intensive. Okay, so uh, then certain things require certain specific permissions to keep the device awake. For example, um, if you are playing a movie, uh, you don't you you won't be you are not likely to interact with the screen every few minutes. Um, you know, you're watching a nice 90 or 120 minute movie and uh, you don't want your device to go to sleep either. Uh, otherwise it's a terrible experience if you have to get up and uh, tap, the, tap the screen every few minutes just to watch your movie. Similarly with music, music is running in background but you don't want um, your device to go to sleep, the CPU to shut down while you are listening to the music. Um, maybe the same thing with the games, you're playing a game and uh, if you're not interacting through the screen, um, you don't want it to go to sleep, right? Um, but um, the, uh, the alarms, um, so yeah, okay. So when the device is not active, when it is asleep, um, you may still want certain things to work and alarm is one of those. So the and the OS knows how to schedule the alarms in a battery efficient way um, through the alarm manager. So you don't really have to worry about it. That is taken care of for you. And um, yeah, so that's how it can help you minimize apps resources. Um, and uh, it is better in some cases to schedule operations at around uh, an exact time without really running background services. So background services can keep your uh, uh, app, uh, can keep your device awake. Okay. okay. So now the types of alarms. Okay. So there can be elapsed real time and real time clock. So with elapsed real time, um, these alarms are can be triggered um, uh, based on how much time has elapsed since the device was booted. And uh, since they depend on sort of the local information of the time, they are not affected by time zones. On the other hand, real-time clock, um, it depends on the coordinated universal time, the UTC, and uh, um, they are, they depend on the, um, the, the locale and uh, they, they can, they are affected if the user changes the device time. Um, but real-time clocks, they have the uh, advantage of um, firing the alarm at a given particular time of the day. So your alarm clock application would use something like this. But except for such very specific applications, it is highly recommended that you don't uh, deal with the real-time clock, but instead stick with the elapsed real-time as we'll see in some examples. So how do you schedule an alarm? Uh, you basically um, use the alarm manager. You can access that using um, the um, using the you know the alarm manager service, um, and then um, you broadcast an intent at a specific specific time uh, or the specific interval. So um, when you call get system service and then pass it alarm service, you get an instance of the alarm manager, and then you have a bunch of set something sort of methods. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on uh, if it's uh, elapsed real time or real, uh, uh, real time clock, you can, you can, you can basically set your alarms. We'll see some examples very soon. Okay. So first of all, single use alarms, um, you have a method set which schedules a single and inexactly, inexactly timed alarm um, using the set method. Now, this, all these methods have a bunch of parameters and overloaded versions also, but here uh, I'm just showing the, um, the high level idea of what each one of those does. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, 
The second one um, is a set window, which lets you set a window of time during uh, a specific uh, period. I mean, a window of a specific period when the alarm should be triggered. Whereas set exact um, gives you a, an opportunity, gives you a way to set the alarm for the exact time. So you can see these three versions, they are in um, increasing level of um, control over when the alarm should go. Um, and at first glance, you may want to use set exact, uh, but it is uh, discouraged to use it unless you really, really want to use it. Um, and let's see why. So uh, first, you know, let's just quickly look at uh, some of the things here. So for an inexactly timed alarm, um, the OS shifts the alarm to basically minimize the wake up and battery use. Okay. So the operating system knows if there are any other alarms um, to be scheduled around the same time. What it can do with uh, such inexactly timed alarms is it can group them together and fire them together so that you, your device does not wake up and shoot up battery use for each one of them. Um, okay. Set window also gives you similar flexibility, um, but less restriction. Uh, I mean, more restriction, less, less openness in that sense. So um, this was introduced, um, well, I mean, the set has been there since API level one, but in API 19, its behavior was changed so that set will always be inexactly, inexactly timed. For API 18 and below, um, the set method ends up doing an exactly timed alarm. So set window and set exact, uh, these were introduced in API 19. And um, as I said, yeah, set exact should be used uh, only when it must be delivered at an, at an exact time, like your wake up alarm clock. Uh, both of these were added in API 19 um, and they changed the default behavior of set, um, sort of, you know, for backward compatibility, uh, but better, uh, implementation, and then these two are added for uh, the added flexibility. Okay. Um, why why is it not a good idea um, to do something like this? Why not just you know why not have set uh, the default behavior be exactly timed alarm or why exactly timed alarms are uh, discouraged? One we saw with the battery use uh, every time uh, the alarm triggers on uh, on a device that is asleep it's going to shoot up the battery use. Second, consider this example. Um, you have an app that, well, that synchronizes with the server um, at a given time every day, right? Uh, maybe in the middle of the night if it's connected to Wi-Fi or in the morning before the user uh, starts looking. Um, and let's say this app is now very famous. Um, and very successful and it has a million users. So everybody in the world, all those million users are, those devices are going to trigger a sync request to your server at the exact same time, right? Or, well, I mean, time zones do play a role here, but still a big chunk uh, could, um, could, uh, could shoot up the sync request at the same time. And that may create a problem for your server, it may, uh, even create a denial of service attack if there are so many requests on your server. So no, that is not productive for yourself. So because of such reasons, it's it's better to give the flexibility of actual scheduling to the OS and not um, not schedule the exact timed alarms. All right. So here is a here is a code example of single user uh, alarms, single use alarms. Uh, alarm manager, you get the instance as uh, we saw before, and then call set. Um, this version of set has um, sets that it's an elapsed real time, and then it says do it after these many milliseconds. Um, so 300,000 milliseconds, uh, basically 300 um, um, seconds, and that is five minutes. And alarm intent is what um, you would use to, it's, it's a pending indent that you would use to broadcast and then something else uh, will, will catch it and, um, and act. Okay. 
Right. Okay. So briefly about DOS and app standby, I, I think I kind of talked about it already, um, but basically DOS is when a device is unplugged and stationary for a period and the screen uh, goes, uh, screen is off. So you're not interacting with the screen. So it uh, doses, it goes into the DOS mode and it ends when the device is again in use. Uh, there is also an app standby mode, which is for the app. Um, it uh, indicates that an app is idle, um, uh, which has an app which has not been used recently is idle. And it ends when the user returns to the app um, or plugs in the device. Okay, so um, the OS handles, uh, OS, OS can be in the DOS mode or a standby mode, but it has uh, short maintenance windows when um, it can complete some deferred activities like firing the standard alarms and it completes it and then goes to the DOS or standby mode. So that's when um, the app can, uh, the device or the OS can scheduled, uh, schedule your uh, inexact alarms without you really having to worry about it. Okay. So um, yes, so alarm set using set and set exact are fired um, during this particular maintenance window or it should be set inexact. So that's where it uh, tries to do that. Yeah, so if you don't really want to um, wait for that, then you have these options. You can call set and allow while idle and set exact and allow while idle. Um, or on API 21 and above, you can call set alarm clock uh, for uh, doing things that should not wait for the maintenance windows. Okay, that's the idea. All right. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the repeating alarms. So you have set inexact repeating, which creates a repeating inexact alarm, uh, which allows for uh, batching. So you know, the OS will synchronize all these repeating alarms together and fire them at the same time, um, conserving some resources. Okay. Um, so as of API 19, as we saw, um, you know all uh, repeating alarms. So we, we saw the change with the set method. Similarly, for all the repeating alarms, API 19 onwards, they are all inexact. There are no, um, no, no exact alarms uh, to be uh, using using such calls. Okay. All right, in API 18 and below then, set repeating creates a repeating exactly timed alarm. If you do it here, you'll get an inexact one. Uh, API 18 and below, it's an exact alarm. Devices running 19 and higher, um, as we saw, set repeating has the same behavior as set inexact repeating. Okay. And here is the code example. Um, here you are creating an inexact alarm, inexact repeating alarm with the RTC and with wake up. So what we are saying here is um, the device should wake up for handling this. And um, the second parameter is uh, the current time in milliseconds which means the first occurrence of this alarm uh, should happen uh, immediately because you're saying um, fire this alarm after that particular current time, right? Uh, that particular real time. Um, and since that is always going to be true, so it fires up for the first time. Then how frequently? Uh, the third parameter says it should happen approximately every 15 minutes. It doesn't mean um, exactly 15 minutes. So around after 15 minutes, it will fire up the second occurrence of the repeat alarm. Now, if um, the method was set repeating, not set inexact repeating, and if you're on API uh, 18 or lower, then the alarm would be repeated exactly 15 minutes. Okay. Possible values for the third parameter are um, interval 15 minutes, as we see here, then you have interval day, interval half day, interval half hour, interval hour, and so on. Uh, some best practices for alarms. Um, use alarms to keep, uh, I mean, um, keep the frequency of your alarms to a minimum, um, depending on the use case, of course. Uh, don't uh, fire them up uh, um, very often. Um, and it's important to not wake the alarm uh, not wake the device unnecessarily. Um, as we saw, waking it up takes a lot of um, a lot of energy. 
um, and it's a drain on battery and other resources. Uh, third best practice from the guide is use the least precise timing possible. Um, so uh, lack of precision is good in this case, as we saw. So um, use, for example, use a set inexact repeating instead of set repeating or um, use a set instead of set window and set exact, etc. Um, and whenever possible, do not use the real time clock, but use the elapsed real time whenever it's possible. Okay. Um, so we already uh, talked about uh, a, a potential problem with the uh, many devices trying to sync at the same time and possibly causing, uh, causing denial of service attack. So that's all about alarms. Um, so with this, we have completed our discussion on all the um, yeah, all the background tasks um, and best ways of handling those with the updates in the um, in the API. Thank you.